Okay, in this lesson you're going to learn about the molar mass. And why the molar mass? Because molar mass is the mass that you're going to find in a mole of a pure substance. And we're going to use the molar mass as a conversion factor. As I was explaining before, molar mass is the mass in grams that you're going to find in a mole of a pure substance. Two examples of pure substance, elements and compounds. It doesn't matter. When you're looking for the molar mass, it doesn't matter if you have an ionic or covalent compound because you're going to follow the same steps. But you have to make sure that when you are looking for the molar mass of a compound, you are like calculating that correctly. Now, to calculate the molar mass or to find the molar mass of an element is super simple because the only thing that you need is the periodic table. Okay? Only thing that you need is the periodic table. The molar mass of an element is the atomic mass of that element, which is displaced in the periodic table, expressing grams. For compounds, you're going to need the periodic table, and also you're going to need the chemical formula of that compound. It doesn't matter if the compound is covalent or if the compound is an ionic compound, because you're going to be following the same step. You're going to be following the same steps. And we are going to start over here with one example. Okay, we are going to start with an element. Okay, you have over here one example. It says that you want to find the molar mass of aluminum, and over here you have a picture of the periodic table. Because I was explaining in the slide before that in order to find the molar mass of an element, you need the periodic table. How are you going to find the molar mass of aluminum? Is it piece of cake? You're going to look over here on the periodic table, and this is the atomic mass. Now, I was explaining before that the molar mass of an element is the atomic mass expressing ground. So, in one mole, in one mole of aluminum, you're going to find 26.982 grams of aluminum, okay? Knowing that, we are going back to the problem, okay? So, over here, you have a question. What is the molar mass of aluminum? You need the periodic table to find that information. Consequently, you can write the molar mass as a conversion factor. This is the molar mass of aluminum because in one mole of aluminum, in one mole, you're going to find this many grams of aluminum. And that is a conversion factor. So molar mass is a conversion factor. So let's say that you want to find you say that you want to find the amount of aluminum in grams that you have in 2.5 moles. Why do you want to find this? Because you were experimenting in the chemistry lab. And when you were balancing your chemical equation, you realize that you need for your reaction 2.5 moles of aluminum. Do I have an instrument here in the lab? that is able to measure the amount of moles? The answer is no. I have balance, digital, analytical, and triple B balance, but they measure grams. They don't measure moles. How am I gonna convert this mole into grams? I'm gonna use the molar mass. And then you have the steps over here. My first step, identify the substance, because you can have an element or you can have compounds, depending on the equation that you have in there. So in this specific case, I'm talking about an element, aluminum, okay? So the second step is used to find the molar mass. Since you have an element, super simple. The only thing that I need is the periodic table, okay? The periodic table, you're gonna find the atomic mass, expressing grams, you know that that's the molar mass. With that information, you are going to the first step. You're gonna complete the third step, which is to write the conversion factor. So in one mole of aluminum, you are going to find this many grams of aluminum because that's the molar mass. With the conversion factor, see, the, the next step is just to set that up. E always, you're going to start with what you have. I want to know how many grams I have in 2.5 moles of aluminum. So I was setting my conversion factor over here. Remember, you're going to start with whatever you have. You're going to start with whatever you have. And always, always, I'm not screaming. Remember, talking with uppercase. Always you're going to multiply by a conversion factor. 
How are you going to set that up? You have to analyze. I have moles, I want grams. So I need to put the moles in the denominator so they can cancel. Remember that oh, you're going to treat this as a fraction. So whatever you have over one, and then you're going to multiply numerator by numerator, denominator by denominator, and then you're going to divide. In this case, it's super easy because when you multiply one by one, is one. So whatever number you get from this multiplication, divided by one is going to give you the same number because uh, identity property of real numbers. And this is my answer, which is not the final one because I need to analyze the significant figures Okay, and I need to write my answer using complete sentence. Significant figures I have two over here, I have five over here, so I need to write the final answer using only two. 67.0 has three significant figures, so you have to write that in scientific notation. E, if you want to express the answer only or using only two significant figures, figures, that's what I did here. Move the decimal point to the left, adding one because I was moving that one place, adding one to my power of 10. Grams, see, there are this many grams of aluminum in 2.5 moles of the same element. And then you are done. Once that you have analyzed the amount of significant figures, you just keep in mind that maybe in all the time you have to write. Not all the time you have to write the final answer using scientific notation, but for this specific case, I have to use scientific notation because there's no other way to have two significant figures over here if I don't use scientific notation, okay? And then you're done with your problem. And you have over here an example, see? Molar mass of an element. The only thing that you need is the periodic table because remember that the atomic mass of the element is present gram is the amount of grams that you're going to find in one mole of that element. You have an example over here. An example over here is ex You Google that. And then you need the periodic table to find the molar mass of each element involved in that chemical formula. See that? Once that you have the chemical formula and you have the molar mass of every element. See? Silver nitrogen and oxygen silver nitrogen and oxygen three elements were involved Ms. Ramos, from where are you getting this information <laughs> periodic table silver see over here silver atomic mass expressing grams what was the other one nitrogen nitrogen atomic mass expressing grams oxygen Atomic mass expressing grams, okay? So from where are you getting this number, Ms. Ramos? Periodic table, okay? I am multiplying that number by the subscript that the elements they have in the formula. That's why you need the formula. Once that you have that multiplication, okay? You have to add all the numbers. And the final number that you get there are out of the addition. That's the molar mass of you compound. And that molar mass is going to be used as a conversion factor. Questions until there. Question. Question. I love that, Mira. Silent night. You know why? Because you, you know what, what time is it? Beautiful. I'm going to extend the due date. I'm not shaking that homework, that homework on the board. And I'm going to shake that for, I'm going to shake that for accuracy. One more time. Okay. This is last example that I'm going to cover today. Mmm. How many moles are there in 28.45 grams? Oh, fight on three hydroxide. Oh, my Ramo, now we are so confused. Why? Because you are not asking for grams. Now you are asking for moles. And you are giving up the grams. And? See that? Okay, you know how to set that up. So I'm going to analyze my problems. I have grams and they want moles. Okay? So, molar mass, 
Now, for the two mole, I'm, I need to analyze. Do I have an element? Do I have a compound? I don't treat hydrogen by looking at the name. You already know that. Because you have a first and a last name. And you're not going to find an element's name with two names. No, impossible. So, <laughs> compound. Okay, so I need to write the formula. If that's the formula for hydrogen 3, iron 3 hydroxide. You don't know how to write the formula, you Google that. At this point, I don't care. You don't know, you don't know, that's it. And in addition to that, you can Google that. Okay, just make sure that Google is giving you the right information. Okay, iron 3 hydroxide. That's my first step, formula. Second step, mm, grams to mole. Mola mass. How am I gonna calculate the molar mass? First, I'm gonna look at the periodic table because I need to find the atomic mass of all the elements involved in the compound. All the elements involved in the compound. And then I'm gonna multiply them by the subscript. Careful, here. Because that three is affecting the two elements that are inside the parentheses. So you have three oxygen and you have three hydrogen. When you multiply that, you add that. And this is the molar mass of iron three hydroxide. In one mole of iron three hydroxide, you're going to find this amount of grams. See, you have your conversion factor in here. Conversion factor in here. In one mole of iron three oxide, how many grams are you gonna find? If that's your conversion factor. After that, you're gonna set that up. Set that up. And now you're gonna start with what you have. What do you have in your question? Grams. Always you're going to multiply by your conversion factor. Always you're going to multiply by your conversion factor. But you need to know how to set that up. If I have grams over here, and if you want to put that over 1 to visualize your fraction in there, because we are treating this as a fraction, do it. If you have gram in your numerator here, what do I have to put the grams in order to get rid of them? I need the grams in the denominator of my conversion factor so they can cancel. Mi Ramos, how am I gonna solve this chorizo? Numerator by numerator, denominator by denominator, and then you divide. Since you are multiplying 28.45 by 1, you're going to divide 28.45 by the number that you have here in the denominator, which is, see, when you multiply this by 1, what are you going to get? 106.868. Number, this number over here in my numerator is uh, smaller than the one that I have in my denominator. So I already know if I have good number sense that the answer is going to give me a number small than one. You don't have any questions. That is not the final answer because over here I have, a ver, let me see. Four significant figures, okay? Let me see, okay, but I have to look at the problem. Four significant figures, okay. My bar over here, I don't know, this is my mistake. Because you're gonna express the final answer using four significant figures and you already have in the answer the four significant figures. So if you want to leave that over here, that's fine. That's fine, okay? I was expressing the final answer in three significant figures because I make a mistake. But you don't need to do, you don't need to do that. Don't need to do that, okay? All depends. So you can leave your answer like that, like the answer that you got over there, or if you want to write that 
in scientific notation with the correct number of significant figure. And you put it to over there. Questions about this? <laughs>